So you're recording vocals in Logic Pro and something's not sounding right. Your voice, Your voice feels, feels delayed, delayed echoey, echoey, doubled, doubled, phasing, or just, just late in your headphones. headphones. Well, don't worry because I'm sharing the best three ways to fix latency in Logic Pro for good. I've divided them into my basic, advanced, and expensive solutions for latency. So check the timestamps below if you want to jump straight to a specific workflow in this tutorial. And all of today's voiceovers and singing are recorded through the Austrian Audio OC818, which is one of the best vocal mics you can get for around $1,000, but more on that later. Hey Kara, how's it sounding in your headphones? Check one, Check two. one two. Yeah, I'm hearing, yeah, I'm a, lot hearing a lot of latency. latency. Is, there is there anything you can do, you can to, do fix to fix it? it? Let's fix this latency with my basic solution in Logic Pro. First, Logic has a very handy built-in feature called Low Latency Monitoring Mode here in the record menu. This automatically bypasses or optimizes the plugins you have running on the channel while you're recording. This is something that I use in every session, so I like to add it as a shortcut in my toolbar by right-clicking, choose Customize Control Bar and Display, then check Low Latency Monitoring Mode, then press Save as default so every Logic session has this shortcut at the top. Now, let's see if we hear a difference. Check one, two. Perfect. Low Latency Monitoring Mode reduces plug-in latency in whatever vocal chain you're using by either bypassing or reducing the CPU load of the plugins in your vocal chain. Plus, it measures the remaining latency caused by all your other plugins on other channels to automatically align your audio recordings using calculated latency totals displayed here in the Logic Audio settings. To get to this window, press the keyboard shortcut Command comma, then navigate to the Audio tab. And while we're here, let's go to our buffer size and choose the lowest number your computer can handle, like 32 or 64. When I'm using my M1 Max MacBook Pro or older, I use 64 or 128. But on my new M4 Max MacBook Pro or M4 Pro Mac Mini, I go to the lowest 32 samples and it runs buttery smooth. Now that our buffer size is reduced, let's do a little snap test to hear our improvement in latency. Now that's a tight sounding headphone mix. The downside of low latency monitoring is that it does bypass any CPU intensive plugins you may have active in your audio track. You'll see my de-esser and sometimes even auto-tune turns orange, indicating that it's temporarily bypassed. Sometimes you can keep auto-tune from bypassing during low latency monitoring mode by opening the plugin and switching from modern to classic mode and also engage use low latency. Now when you enable the orange button, your auto-tune stays active. Logic Pro stock plugins tend to be a little more compatible with low latency monitoring mode, but now let's ask Kara how the headphone mix sounds now. Check one, two. Oh, hey. oh, yeah. So much better. Our auto-tune compression and EQ are all working, but I want to add a little bit more reverb to this headphone mix. So let's load up the new stock Quantec reverb in Logic and turn down the reverb level and keep the dry signal at full volume. And you can load up any other plugins you need here to be both in your headphone mix and your playback mix. Now that's sounding really nice, and I don't hear any noticeable latency. So there you have my basic solution for recording vocals in Logic Pro with low latency. This is a great workflow for anyone who wants lots of different plugins in their headphone mix while they perform. But now let's kick it up a notch with my advanced solution for latency in Logic. I call this solution advanced because it combines features from both your audio interface and Logic Pro simultaneously. Plus it lets you achieve a perfect zero latency workflow instead of the previous basic approach, which is just low latency. Zero latency and low latency are two slightly different things, so let's break it down. For this example, I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 fourth generation, but pretty much every decent popular interface from the past decade has a button or app for direct input monitoring. This sends a copy of your mic's dry input signal straight to your headphones without any plugin processing, DAW buffer settings, or latency getting in the way. And you'll know it's working correctly when you can already hear yourself dry in your headphones before you've even opened Logic. Check one, two. 
Direct monitoring can sometimes sound a little quiet, so just turn up your headphone levels a little louder than usual while you're recording. Now we hear ourselves dry with zero latency through the Focusrite app and interface. But I know not everybody likes a bone dry mix while they perform, so let's open Logic and add some light sauce to this headphone mix. First, you wanna start with two audio tracks. One's gonna be called Reverb and the other is gonna be called Vocals. On the vocal channel, I'm gonna load up whatever chain I like to mix to, but here on this reverb channel, I'm gonna load up my favorite reverb plugin, like Logic's new Quantec Room Simulator, using the mono to stereo version, because stereo reverbs always sound way better in the mix. Turn down the dry level all the way, reduce the wet level around minus 20 to sit behind your dry vocal. Customize your reverb length to match the vibe of your song. Activate input monitoring on the reverb channel to hear it in your headphone mix. Enable recording on the vocal channel to track your dry audio up here. And press mute on the vocal channel so you don't hear yourself twice in your headphone mix. Because remember, we can already hear our mic's dry direct signal through the Focusrite direct monitoring. Plus Logic's saucy reverb in the background of the headphone mix using the Quantec plugin on the channel below. And together, they sound like this. Check one, two, check one, two. Now that sounds perfect. I like to reduce my master output about minus eight to 10 dB to avoid the beat overpowering your vocals while you're singing. And if you're hearing latency between your wet reverb and your dry direct monitoring, it's likely due to mastering plugins here on the stereo out bus. To fix this, click on settings and choose remove all effect plugins and double check that your buffer size is all the way down in the logic audio settings and enable low latency monitoring mode to make sure everything tracks correctly in time. And you're ready to record perfectly sauced up vocals that sound like this. Logic records a dry signal while your singer hears a saucy reverb in their headphone mix. This advanced direct monitoring workflow is perfect for situations where all you need is reverb or delay, or you just like to sing completely dry. And this headphone reverb channel can simply get deleted when you're done recording. And that's my advanced solution for zero latency in every Logic Pro session. I know this is a couple extra steps, but it's my personal favorite workflow. But obviously, if you need to sing through auto-tune, EQ, compression, noise gates, or DSing, this is not the solution for you. But if you need all those other effects while you're recording, that means you're either gonna be resorting to the basic workflow, which we talked about before, or my expensive workflow, which we're gonna get into next. So what do you do when you need maximum plugins in your headphone mix and maximum CPU power available to Logic? You wanna produce, record, mix, and master all in one session and never have to bounce or consolidate your tracks or open up a separate vocal session to record, and you wanna retain all the flexibility to use auto-tune, compression, EQ, gates, or whatever you like in your headphone mix. Well, for that, I recommend my expensive solution. And that is either upgrading your audio interface to something with DSP, like an Apollo or Antelope Audio, or upgrading your computer. The best computers I've used for low latency and logic are the new M4 Max MacBook Pro and the M4 Pro Mac Mini that Apple dropped in late 2024. These things are insanely powerful. And as I mentioned earlier, I've never had to raise my buffer size above 32 since I've upgraded to M4, not once total life changer. And of course, the other expensive option has always been buying a DSP-based audio interface like Apollo Twin X or Antelope Audio's similar Galaxy products because these include an app that's direct monitoring on steroids. It gives you access to load up any plugin you like in your headphone mix outside of Logic. For example, using the Universal Audio console app it gives you access to a huge menu of legendary UAD plugins that you could purchase separately. And this was my go-to latency solution for the past 10 years. And just like in my advanced solution, I mute the channel I'm recording onto because I can already hear my headphone mix through the console app.
However, this year, these new M4 computers I'm using in 2025 and beyond are so fast and so powerful that for the first time, I feel like my computer is strong enough where I don't need extra external DSP ever again. But if you need this fancy app in your workflow and the basic and advanced solutions don't work for you, I totally understand, and these two audio interfaces are a great choice. But for everybody else, it probably makes more sense to upgrade your computer instead of spending those thousands on just your interface. So there you have my basic, advanced, and expensive solutions for latency in Logic Pro. Let me know in the comments below which solution works best for you or if you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time in another video.